Tawakkal Karman, thank you for joining me on Upfront. Thank you. When you won the Nobel Peace Prize in 2011, you were the first Arab woman to do so. And at the age of 32, you were one of the youngest ever Nobel Peace Laureates. What is it like today to be a Nobel Peace Laureate from a country, Yemen, that has been torn apart by war and conflict for so many years? It's really hard. It's really hard for me as a Nobel Peace Laureate and also as one of the leaders of the peaceful revolution. It's very, really hard for all Yemeni people who sacrificed peacefully and made that great revolution peacefully and entered to the transitional period peacefully. Um, but uh, we are not the one who caused this war. We are not the one who caused this chaos. This chaos and war is waged by the counter-revolution led by Saudi and Emirates and Iran. Who, in your view, uh, is at the top of the list in terms of taking responsibility for the catastrophe in Yemen? We can blame all of them. But the most important party or part of this conflict, I blame the Saudi and UAE because they are behind the militia coup. You can't imagine that the one who encouraged Houthi militia before Iranian interfere or announcing that they are supporting Houthis is the Saudi and Emirates. They thought that they can encourage Houthi to make the coup against the transitional authority so they will be able to destroy Yemen and also to stop the ongoing um, movement to democracy. So they made revenge against Yemeni people who made their re, uh, peaceful revolution against, the, against their uh, ally, against Ali Abdullah Saleh, the, uh, the form, former, president. Yeah, former president. The same thing that they did in, in Egypt, in, in, uh, in Libya. So they are the one who behind the coup, so they fi uh, finance it. And also now they are the one who destroying Yemen and who doesn't want Yemen to succeed. They want Yemen to stay as a failure country so they will be able to continue their equation and hegemony in so, Yemen. So when I interviewed you last on this show four yeah. years ago, you were quite reluctant to criticize Saudi Arabia back then with regard to Yemen. At the time, you were saying to journalists, quote, the majority of Yemenis, you said, support the Saudi-led military intervention. Since then, you seem to have done this kind of U-turn. Now you're saying Saudi Arabia is to blame for the humanitarian suffering. Now you're calling Saudi Arabia and the UAE occupiers. You called them stupid fools recently uh, in an address. What made you change your mind on Saudi Arabia? Look, it's, it was really that most of Yemenis doesn't want to criticize the Saudi interfere in the beginning, in the beginning of the, their interfering, because they announced that they came to face the militia coup and they are pretending to return the legitimacy to the country. So that was the, the scene at that time. I didn't publicly support Saudi intervention in Yemen. Absolutely, I don't, and I won't, because their policy in Yemen that women, Ye Yemen should be weak. That is the only way mm. that Saudi will be strong. So I didn't, you know, um, um, I didn't support them, but also I was calling the international community to be responsible and to fulfill in their supporting Yemen and also on implementing the Security Council resolutions. Because what happened in Yemen, also not just the result of Saudi, Emirates, and Iran. It's also because of the complicity from the international community. Mm. They sponsored the GCC initiative, but they let also uh, Houthis to enter yes. to Yemen, and they didn't make anything. And also, until now, they support Saudi and Emirates, selling them the weapons and yes. uh, killing so Yemenis while they don't you know, do any re great, any real effort to stop this war. Your critics say, well, Tawakkul Karman is criticizing Saudi Arabia now, but they point to leaked cables that show that you said to the Saudis, you're our natural allies, you were calling for Saudi support in private. That's what your critics say. Yes, and I still call for that. They are our neighbor. They should be the allies of Yemenis, and they should uh, uh, change their policy and their bad view to Yemenis. So Yemen is the national security of all the region and all the, all the world. So any collapsing 
any destroying Yemen. Yemen, if it will be real, failed country that will collapse the regional security and also the international security. So yes, I'm calling Saudi, I'm calling Oman, I'm calling uh, all the re region, I'm calling US, I'm calling so, all the, so they you, should be with Yemen, they should so what, deal with Yemen as a lie, not as an, an if enemy. If you could send a message directly to Mohammed bin Salman, the Saudi crown prince who has been a driving force behind this war from the very beginning as Crown Prince, as uh, Defence Minister, uh, what would you say to him? I will tell him that he is a criminal. I will not ask anything from Mohammed bin Salman because he's destroying my country. Mohammed bin Salman and Mohammed bin Zayed, they should be trialed uh, in the International Criminal Court because they are committed to the war crimes in my country. Last year, you referred to Saudi Arabia and the UAE as having a very ugly occupation and uglier influence in Yemen. Shortly afterwards, you were suspended from Al Isla, the Yemeni political party that you were part of, that's been allied with President Hadi at one point, that is often described in the West as a Muslim Brotherhood party. Is that the reason you were suspended from that party, because you criticised the Saudis? Are you still a member of that party? Yes, they tried uh, to suspend me and, and to freeze my uh, membership, but I told them, who frees whom? Because they are, their decision is being kidnapped by the Saudi. Our president also is kidnapped by the Saudi. So all political decision in Yemen, even if it's with the presidential you know, level or with the parties, is kidnapped by Saudi. And the most important thing for us as a Yemeni, if we want to make the peace in Yemen, we should free our political decision. Given Western governments yeah. like the UK and the US are supporting and arming the Saudi-led coalition in Yemen, are they also, quote, stupid fools uh, who are among those responsible for the suffering in your country? Of course, Saudi and the UAE stupid fools. What about their Western backers? They are so stupid fools, by the way. Either they are stupid fools or they are conspiring with them. So they are participating in killing Yemenis. The US and the UK? Of course. U.S. and U.K. participating in killing Yemenis or any other countries that selling uh, weapons to Saudi and Emirates or also any other countries that support Iran mm. to uh, send or export weapons to, to Houthis. So, um, and they uh, really, U.S. and U.K. should stop their selling weapons to Saudi and Emirates for many, many reasons. For first, it's for, for, uh, first it's because of the humanitarian issue. Yemeni people being killed, Yemen now under the famine because of this ugly war. Yeah. And also because of the security of the world. If, the, uh, if they are really concerned about the, secu the, um, the peace and the security around the world, they should stop this war because mm. this war will collapse in Yemen in a very important geographic, uh, geographic uh, politics place. And that will increase rebellions, terrorists, poverty, yeah. refugees, etc., etc. So you what is the, you know, I, I think that they don't think in a good way, not just in Yemen, by the way. They are allying with the dictators mm. in Arab Spring countries. And that is the big mistake that the West is committed. So allying with the dictators, that means that you are you are destroying the safety and the security around the world. You, you say they should stop the war. Bruce Rydell, a former CIA officer, a Middle East expert, he said, if the United States of America and the United Kingdom tonight told King Salman of Saudi Arabia that this war has to end, it would end tomorrow. Do you agree with him? Of course, I agree with this. But unfortunately, most of the countries, especially US and, and, and UK, they put the interest above the, their values. Yeah. But also with that, they are wrong because they ha should know that they should make allies with the people, not with the dictators. Mm. The dictators will go today, tomorrow, after one month, one year, two years. But the people who are dreaming for freedom and sacrificing for democracy, yeah. they, should, they, should, they, are the, should, they should be the one who make allies with them. So Donald Trump, President of the United States, soon may have a bill, a law on his desk, that he can either sign or veto, which would end US involvement in the Yemen war. A group of bipartisan senators, Democrats, Republicans, have helped pass a bill through the House and the Senate to stop US involvement. Some say he might veto that bill because he's so close to Saudi Arabia. What's your message to Donald Trump? My message to President Trump, uh, you are looking for accomplishment in your presidency uh, period. 
this accomplishment mm. will be really if you stop the war in Yemen. And that is very important, and you are the one who can do it. So I'm calling him to stop the war in Yemen. He can do it more than making the nuclear agreement with the North Korea. But the Trump administration that. itself uh, isn't so keen on stopping the war. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has said that the Houthi group in Yemen, the militia, and Iran are to blame for Yemen's humanitarian crisis. He doesn't blame the Saudis. Are you worried that your country is stuck in the middle of some clash between America, Saudi on one side, Iran on the other? Yemen under the proxy war. This is exactly it. And, and also Saudi Emirates, Iran, and the superpowers mm. behind them. But also, I don't want to exclude Houthis, because Houthis are really committed to r big crimes in Yemen. They are the same. They are committed to the war cr crimes mm. in Yemen. They waged. They accepted to be the tools, either to be to the tools of Saudi and Emirates in the yeah. beginning, or then uh, to, to the Iran. But if both so, sides are committing war crimes, which is what human rights groups say, can there ever be justice for ordinary Yemenis? Because at some stage, one of those two sides is going to be in charge of your country. So I'm calling them Houthis from one side and also Islah from one side. If we really want, as Yemeni, to make solution by ourselves without interfere from outside countries, Houthis and Islah should sit together and decide and to uh, reconciliate and make some, another step for peace in Yemen. Okay, and just before we finish, you were a close friend of the murdered Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi. Do you hold the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, Mohammed bin Salman, responsible for his killing? Of course, Mohammed bin Salman is responsible for killing Jamal Khashoggi. He is the highest power in the Saudi, and this kind of uh, crimes will not happen without mm. his permission. Uh, and also, I'm not just telling, talking about Jamal Khashoggi. Uh, uh, Mohammed bin Salman also committed to another crime to our colleagues, women activists inside the prison of Saudi mm. Arabia. And what make Mohammed bin Salman continue his ruling on uh, killing journalists, torturing women, and uh, other uh, activists uh, and religious people inside. Why? Because the absence or because of the uh, complicity of the world, because of the dark oil money, he buy yeah. the, the silence from the so world. So do you think in the international community, Western governments will ever be able to get justice for Jamal, given that a lot of them are in bed with they the should, Crown Prince? They should, if they didn't make justice for Jamal that will send a very bad message to the dictators in our region and all our, around the world, but especially in our region, to continue their brutality. Look, with all this darkness, you should that we are facing a counter-revolution. And that is part of any path of people for freedom and for democracy. We are suffering, we suffered from decades of brutality of dictators. And we are now paying the price of freedom. So w all these counter-revolution countries will stop their conspiracy one yep. day. And now, okay. what do you see now in Algeria, in Sudan? It's the victory of people, the re-emerging of Arab Spring. And that means that we will not give up our dream, our sacrifice, and our will to uh, achieve our freedom and democracy. Tawakal Kalman, thanks for joining me on Upfront. Thank you.